and we're here at the ID Tech X show. And who are you? I'm Greg Babe. I'm the president and CEO of Liquid X. So what does Liquid X do? Liquid X is a uh, Carnegie Mellon University spin out, and we develop particle-free functional inks that enable the next generation of uh, printed electronics. So, for example, the stuff that's right here in this. What is this? Yeah, this here? is an example of a uh, of a um, heat, heat trace that's, that has been printed on a non-woven material. This could be used, for instance, in a car seat or uh, in uh, in apparel for providing warmth when it's cold, as an example. So, uh, Liquid X. What's the idea with the name? Liquid X is because we have a uh, Liquid X printed metals because we have silver inks, gold inks, uh, we're developing platinum uh, as nickel inks as well, and those are typically metals, but in our case, it looks like a clear liquid, uh, and it is a clear liquid, particle free. How do you make it clear? It's just a little bit of it? It's by the, no, it's clear by its nature, because we dissolve the metal, we bound the, bind the metal and then dissolve it in an aqueous solvent, and that gives us a clear ink, uh, and it stays clear until we decide to turn it into a solid metal. And at that time, it becomes a solid silver trace, a solid gold trace, or whatever it is that we happen to be printing at the time. So this is the material right there? That's, that's exactly it. Water clear until we decide to print it and cure it. And we have a lot of focus right now uh, in the uh, in functionalization, e-textiles, smart fabrics, and a lot of uh, what we're demoing here at ID Tech X this year is focused in that area. So let's check this shirt right here. What sure. do you do with a shirt? Uh, and this particular shirt is a demonstrating what we can do from a functionalizing that with LED lights. This could be something that would be a runner shirt or it could be in a safety application. And here we have printed using our inks uh, and we've been able to, to go directly onto the fabric. So there's no, there's nothing that, uh, that, that is laminated on here. We're printing directly onto the fabric. We're installing the LEDs directly onto the fabric. Uh, and that's an application that we think makes a very comfortable fit. Uh, so it's in there? So it's, oh, it's actually all just right here. Right there. Uh, that's it. Yeah. So it's all focused right there, and it's very function, very flexible, uh, very uh, comfortable. Let's go towards the screen you have over there. Uh huh. Uh, what do you show on that screen? Well, is this your liquid? This is our. This is just kind of a story of what we do and what our applications are. There's a there's a great view of of our inks, for instance, being uh, being uh, water clear. Uh, and uh, we'll also talk about you know what's 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 so special about it. Well, we're particle free, and we have a water-based solvent system. That means that we can print through standard industrial uh, ink jetting, aerosol jetting. We can also print von gravure and flexo, uh, but our ink is very flexible because of the way it's manufactured. Nice. What am I seeing here in this window There's up here? There's a few uh, samples no, no, no. of our ink on other applications. So they're printed here on, could be an antenna, printed on Kapton, uh, PET. Uh, these are also some non-woven samples uh, of, uh, of, of uh, printed components. All right. And then uh, you have a bunch of demos right there. We do. Maybe, maybe we can uh, jump in We've and see. We've got some customers there too. Yeah. That's a good thing. So what's uh, happening here? Uh, what is so this? this is this shows a this is once again on a non-woven, and this is a capacitive uh, a touch sensor. So you could imagine that you could build into this an automobile seat or into a headliner uh, a capacitive. I could turn on a switch. In this particular case, we have a program that it turns on, and as soon as you remove the finger, it turns off. You could program it otherwise so that you'd have to touch it again. And this is on a non-woven, right. And then you just... <clears throat> 
put it on somehow? It would be a light, it could be rolling it down a window, rolling up a window. How do you install it on the material? That's the best part. You just inkjet print it directly onto the material. There's no wiring, there's nothing like that. You're directly printing it onto the material and then you're, you're, you're connecting your components. So you put the non-woven in there? Right. You and would then print it, just it. I would print that non woven. Like you're printing a t shirt. Just like I'm printing it. Well, in this particular case, like I'm printing a t shirt, or almost like you're printing a paper on your at home, because we use a standard inkjet technology, not, uh, not uh, screen printing in this. In case. a way that nobody else does it? Uh, in a way that we think we do it best, for sure. Uh, there are others who have similar processes, but we think that our uh, that our ink is the best. And what is that demo right here showing? This demo is actually a color change, uh, and this is uh, as and this basically shows one of our inks that is um, that should color change. I'm seeing if. I yeah, we'll give right it a there? little bit of time. Yeah, so it'll start to shift. There you go. How does that work? Uh, that that works because it is uh, the, the current the current that we build there increases the temperature. That's a thermochromic ink, and as a result of that, as the temperature increases, it changes colors. If I turn that back off and the temperature drops, it'll go back to the other color. It does mean that your T-shirt is going to be able to change <coughs> colors. Uh, it, you could do that if you want. Absolutely, there are a lot of things that you could change colors on in that case. So it's a pro is a end product kind of. Uh as an end product. As an end product, that you can generally would be looking at something that where you wanted to sense a temperature shift, and if you did, that you could get a, an in immediate indication, for instance, that there's a temperature shift. You could clearly design a t-shirt or apparel that if you wanted it to be able to change colors, that I could print the circuitry directly into that piece of apparel. I could apply the uh, a, a battery and the voltage across that, and with that, I would change the color of the uh, fabric. And what is this demo right here? Well, this demo I can't really let you use the camera on because oh. it's a it's a very very bright Secret. LED. No, it's a very oh. very bright LED. It's going to Much break brighter my than what's on your on your head. Yeah. Uh, but I can, I can, you know, I warn you that it's going to be very bright. And what we're demonstrating here is that our ink can handle uh, very high temperatures in an application such as an LED. Wow, that's very bright. And that's done direct printed with our ink onto a Kapton substrate. Um, Kapton, is that Kapton. the stuff that Dupont makes? No. Yes, polyamide. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So. You use a lot of that. Uh, as we a use more PET uh, polyester than we do uh, polyimide, but for applications like this that clearly have a higher temperature requirement, uh, polyimide's a great product. Nice, and, and still here, gives you the flexibility. And this happens to be a uh, radio frequency. This is RF harvesting, so this could be like for wireless uh, charging. So if you, if I take this away, you see that the LED is out. If I get it down into the range of the radio frequency from that radio frequency generator, you can see that the LED is, is, is now on. Now that says that I could use this to do a lot of things, including, for instance, being able to charge a, uh, lost my signal there, but being able to charge a, a device remotely without and, and ha do it wirelessly. All right. Uh, so you say, you were spinning out from... Uh, Carnegie Mellon University. So that means this stuff has been worked on for a while before already? Is uh, in being researched for a long time or...? Uh, we spun out in 2009, so the business is approaching uh, 10 years since it spun out of Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, we've developed, at that time there was basically one ink, uh, and at this point we have developed many more inks uh, capable of being printed across uh, basically all of the commercial printing platforms. Uh, how would you say is the state of uh, printer electronics and all this stuff? How far, how, how, how much growth is possible in the I near future? I think there's a lot of growth possible and I think we're at an inflection point, a very important inflection point. I think now the, the designers have, have learned to dream about what uh, printed electronics can really do. They're thinking more uh, creatively around what they can do in 
uh, and uh, with applying the kind of capabilities that, uh, that, that we can demonstrate here and others as well. And, uh, and I think we're at a, a very important break point here.